Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here. I first of all want to thank Claudia and Michelle and all the team of the people that put together this conference. It is needed. I love the two objectives. One is to change the narrative. The other one is to gather us, to try to change it together. I think that's so important. We need to work together. I think there's um, consensus that there's no way out of that one. And that's exciting. We can do so much when we work in the same boat. Um, my name is Ana Valdez, and I'm the executive president of the Latino Donor Collaborative. I am here to tell you a little bit about our numbers, a little bit about the contributions of Latinos, why we do these numbers, and then how can we use it to change the narrative? So with that, I am going to share my screen. You will be able to see me in the upper corner, but we'll be focused basically on my presentation, and I think you'll like it. Et voila. Okay. So again, we're going to talk about the economic impact of Latinos in America. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are so that you understand where our data comes from and why do we do it. We're a think tank. We put together information and our aim is to create a real fact-based narrative of who Latinos are. And why did we decide to go with fact-based narrative? Because it's the only way to create an accurate perception and specifically of the economic impact because it's what really matters to all Americans. There is a very important part of the moral factor of why Latinos should have a positive narrative, but there is a very powerful probably wider spread premise of economic impact that is very um, underused um, and that should be well known. So 10 years ago when the Latino Donor Collaborative was found, the leaders that founded decided that that was going to be the aim, to show the accurate perception of how Latinos are impacting the economy and how indispensable they are for it. We distribute this information for free. You can go to our website. We actually invite all of our Latino colleagues and everybody to go to our website, latinodonorcollaborative.org and download it. But most importantly, we actually strategically share it with national resource allocators <clears throat> business decision makers and opinion influencers. Why? Because they use it to empower their bottom line and the way to use it is including Latinos. So that helps to open the doors for our community. Overall, we have created 27 original reports and we don't do the research in-house we partner and we partner with the top research experts. So here are some names. You can see that on the academic side, we partner with UCLA, Stanford, Cal Lutheran, Columbia University. And we also partner with um, groups like Boston Consulting Group, NIRA, uh, Nielsen, um, uh, Boss, uh, Morgan Stanley to create this data that we are talking about and that I'm going to share with you. You probably have seen our data also covered by media um, on the economic um, uh, realm of news stories, and we're always happy to see that. We also write op-eds and we have campaigns, and you probably have seen some of them um, sharing our information. And last but not least, one of the most exciting parts of actually my job is to sit with one-on-one uh, one -on -one sessions with corporate and media leaders, CEOs, CMOs, uh, COOs, presidents, and show them this information. And together, finding ways to, um, how do I say this in a politically correct way? Finding ways to show them their blind spot with the community and empower them to create strategies to tackle it, and more importantly, to grow with it. 
So our, our overall theme is the new mainstream economy. Why? Because we talk about the economy of the 20, 20th century, the 1980 America that was 88% white and that was you know, managed in certain way. But then 40 years later, 20 years into the 21st century, we actually cannot act except with the new mainstream economy in mind. Why? Because that's the only America that exists today, a country where 41% is diverse and where this diversity is actually driving the economy. And so that's what we call most of the presentations that we have, which is the new mainstream economy in America. First, why are we so important for this country? Well, number one, we have the highest fertility. The numbers are the numbers and our growth is tremendous. It was tremendous via immigration all the way to till 2008, but then starting 2008, immigration became much less relevant for Latinos and our growth now comes from our national fertility rate. As you can see in this graphic, Latinos have the highest one. And we are not only replacing ourselves, but we're actually growing our community. If you see in this chart, Blacks, Whites, and Asians actually have a much lower rate. And that makes us a real gift for this country because workforce is growth. Amongst population, I'm gonna share with you some other premises and numbers that come from, come from our research um, and that enlightens really the way Latinos are contributing. And again, I don't want to reinstate the importance of our contributions, but the way we're driving the growth of this economy. First, let's go to the Latino GDP. Our report in 2020 delivered a number of $2.3 trillion that Latinos are contributing to the GDP in America. And let me give you two premises so that you understand the proportion of this 2.3 trillion. If Latinos were an economy by itself, if we were an independent country with $2.3 trillion, we would be the eighth largest country in the world. And not only that, but we are growing so fast that our GDP is the single fastest growing. If we were a fully developed economy, it would be the single fastest growing. Number two, consumption, because GDP means productivity, but consumption is also tremendous for Latinos. If So US Latino real consumption grew 72% faster than the non-Latino consumption. What does this mean? This means upward mobility. This means that we not only are producing, but we're advancing, we're growing as community, as individuals. We consume, we buy houses. There's a study that says that 56% of all the new homes from our partners at NAREP, 66% of all the new homes in America are being bought by Latinos. If that's not upward mobility, I don't know what it is, but you know, it is, we are not only producing, we're consuming and we're growing. I mentioned before, and here in number three, I mentioned before on my, on my chart, Latino, the Latino population is growing six times faster than the non-Latino population. That means that 1 million US Latinos will turn 18 this year and every year for the next two decades. And let me tell you what that means. That means that our community hasn't even peaked our average age is 28 years old. The average age of a non-Latino in America is 42. Our kids have not even entered the workforce and we're already driving the economy. Imagine how that will look in the next years. We also are responsible for 82% of the growth in the US workforce. And we are 5% points higher than non-Latinos in participation rate. We have a study, the study that a study that we've been doing actually with Nira that talks about how Latinos are productive. How? 
Why? Yes, it's true. We know the neighbor, the friend, the family member that has three jobs. We know the kids, our kids that have, you know, two jobs while going to college. But why are we so productive? We are not only working tremendously, our work ethic is very powerful, but we're also working more. There's a, a study that is coming out from the Latino Donor Collaborative from us about coronavirus. And we're gonna, we're gonna deliver numbers that show that even during the crisis of the pandemic, Latinos are losing jobs and are getting jobs again, faster than anybody else. If we don't get the same job because the job disappeared, we find new ones. If we don't get new ones, we found a new business and we sell something but we find a way to continue being productive. And that's a gift of the Latino community too. And last but not least, we build businesses. 86% of all the new net growth in businesses is Latino. We're not only building wealth for ourselves by founding, founding um, businesses, but we also are giving jobs not only to Latinos, but also to non-Latinos as, as the latest report from SLAY says, Stanford. But also we are growing the businesses that are already exist. We actually are growing these businesses. It's not all moms and pops stores in the corner. We are in tech, we are in medicine, we are in entertainment and we're growing those businesses. I'm gonna give you three examples in more depth about how we are indispensable for this economy. And I'm only giving you three examples in the next three charts because I could give you a hundred, but we don't have the time. But the, these three are so relevant, especially now during the pandemic. Where would America's food supply be without the Latino factor? I chose this example for you because I remember that Bill Gates said at the beginning of the pandemic, something like, if you think this health crisis is dramatic, just imagine a food supply crisis. And I right away thought about our Latino community because as you can see here, Almost 40% of all food processing workers are Latinos, 34% of all cooks, 29% of all bakers, 73% of all farm workers. Imagine that food crisis that Bill Gates is talking about that could happen on, you know, just by not having Latinos, just by not having Latinos continuously growing into these um, jobs. This is a 985 billion um, industry, agriculture is, and we are 73% of all farm workers. Another great example is the construction industry. What would happen if we weren't there? Because 70% 70, 70 of all drywall installers are Latinos, 56% of all roofers, and 37% of all construction workers. Imagine new homes being built without Latinos. They would be far fewer. They would be much more expensive. The way we are contributing to the economy is not only with our, with our work, but also with the possibility of the amount of work that we produce. What would happen finally to the apparel industry? Well, look at these numbers. 47% <laughs> of all cut and sew apparel manufacturing employees are Latinos, 44% of all sewing machine operators, 29% of all the textile and leather manufacturing. This again is an industry of $9.6 billion. Imagine what we would lose to other countries, other countries in Latin America, other countries in Asia, because we wouldn't have enough workforce. Again, I, I think I already said it, Entrepreneurs are not only building new businesses, but they are, they are delivering money and they are delivering new jobs for Latinos and for non-Latinos. And the bottom line is that if we grow 80% of the American workforce, and if workforce is the engine for growth, as all economists know, without Latinos, the economy wouldn't grow. 
So back to the beginning, these numbers are impressive. They are real and they show the indispensability of our community. I, I do these presentations because I really want every one of us to use this data as our magic weapon to live in this space, in this space of Latino greatness. Why do I say this? Because when we finish this presentation, when we finish this fabulous conference, we'll go back to the world, we'll go back to live in the space of a world that thinks that Latinos are dot, dot, dot. Unfortunately, mostly not positive things. This data will help us to keep living in the space that we're living right now, in this space where Latinos are contributing to the growth in amazing ways and to spread the word and to build that outside world also with these numbers, to spread the word to the value of who we are, to change the narrative of our neighbors, our kids, our bosses, our clients. This data is really your tool and your magic weapon. Now, this, is, this was the great part, right? And again, please go to our website. You can download all this information in detail. Now, how does this affect, affect the narrative? We already talked about how we distribute our information with decision makers, with the most important newspapers and media uh, news outlets, and that's important. But in the end, in the end, the narrative of who we are is being created by the media, by the mass media. So how do we change that narrative? the way it was created, by changing the images in mass media. This is a mission, this is a fight that has been taken by various organizations, some of them represented here, which I'm so excited about, and some of them like Joaquin Castro, Congressman Joaquin Castro, that is actually, you know, all alone taking, you know, <laughs> uh, media leaders in Hollywood, you know, traveling to LA from Washington to demand action, to demand a change. And what you're gonna see in the next charts is what the Latino Donor Collaborative is doing to contribute to it. I wanna give you some numbers so that you understand what we're doing and you understand a little bit of the situation of Latinos in media. First of all, according to Nielsen, Latinos account for 29, for more than 29% of the audiences in the United States. That comes with the spending that those, those audiences are doing. So first, obviously, sign up to digital platforms, um, sign up to cable, you know, uh, distributors, buying the products that the shows are advertising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that 29% of the audience is paying their way into being that percent of the audience. So we're actually spending, we Latinos are spending money uh, by being the audience. But guess what? On the other side of that line that you see in my chart is the percentage of our representation in media. So we're actually consuming the media, but we're not representing. Like my husband used to say, my mon my green money is good enough for you to take, but my brown face is not good enough for you to put me on the photo or on the film or on the TV show. Why? This balance is not good for anybody. This, this, this unbalanced, lack of balance is not good for anybody. We go back to the moral premise. It's not good for our kids. It's not good for us. It's not good for our community and it's not good for America to not have representation in media. But also it's terrible for their business of media because imagine a consumer product company whose products are being, buy, are being bought 30% by Latinos and not having a Latino strategy. Imagine a Pepsi without a Latino advertising, you know, advertisement or you know, Procter & Gamble or you know, General Mills. That would be almost suicidal, right? Well, media is 
doing that. Media has such a blind spot that they're doing that. Only 1.4% of the leads in shows and films are Latinos. Only 2.1% of all writers are Latinos and only 1.1% of all directors are Latinos. And why do actors, writers and directors are important for us? Because actors, writers and directors are the ones that are creating the narrative. They're the ones that hire the actors. They're the ones that create the story. They're the ones that direct the story. They're the ones that create the heroes. They are the ones that decide who gets the girl. These people are deciding and we don't have our community represented within this industry. Our representation has been scarce and negative. We've heard this before, right? I mean, there's a study about UCLA that talks about the lack of diversity and Columbia University has talked about it. And USC has another diversity report in media that is very focused on women. And then Pew Research has mentioned it here and there and other fabulous organizations have, right? But none of them actually have numbers and have raised their voice about specifically the lack of Latino representation. And Latinos, according to Nielsen, are the ones the least represented. So the LDC created a report that is fully focused in Latinos, that is really deep in the analysis, and that is shared with you and with any and all decision makers in media to benchmark our participation and our representation. This report is called the Latinos in Media LDC Report. And we've been reporting on actresses and actors, showrunners, directors, and writers since 2018. We report this by season. And the greatest part I think of this report is that not only we're fully focused in Latinos, on Latinos, but our report is a census. It's not a sample. All these other reports that I mentioned are samples. They grab and decide on certain amount of shows and they focused on them. Ours is a census. We review every single show in traditional TV and in platforms that is aired in a year, every single one of them. And in the case of films, we review every film in digital platforms and the top 100 box office films every year. And we report not only on what I already said, which is the talent behind and in front of the camera, but also we report by studio, by network, by cable channel, and by streaming platform. Why is this important? Because we go to CEOs and we tell them, you know, your studio is doing this and this and this and this in, this in the Latino space. Your competition is doing this and this and this and this in the Latino space. The market has grown with this and this and this activities in the Latino space. This is your blind spot and this is your opportunity. So we're not in the business yet, parentheses, of shaming media. We're in the business of helping them to attack and to combat their terrible blind spot with our community. And this report is also um, divided by, by, by genre. So, Drama has a specific behavior, comedy has a different behavior, reality, kids, and animation, and we report by studio and by genre. How do we go to the CEOs of media and talk to them? We make them aware of the way their clients, the advertisers, are dealing with the Latino community. Most advertisers have a Latino and a powerful Latino strategy. Why? Because their products are being, the growth of their products 
is being driven by the Latino market. If you see this chart, the red bars is the Latino consumption growth. <clears throat> the blue one is the overall US consumption growth. Every step of the way since 1990, Latinos have grown faster in every category of consumption pro, uh, products than anybody else. Specifically, we have this by industry. I am sharing here just one example, which is the beauty industry, because we have it by product. So hand, body lotion, hand and body lotion, bar and liquid soap. Latinos have outgrown every other non-Latino community. The red bars are the ones that grow. Those are the Latino community. And we tell them, not only <clears throat> your clients, which are the advertisers, know what you're missing, but also you should think about your future because today, 25% of our Latino Gen Xs are Latin, are, I mean, 25 percent of our American Gen Xs are Latinos. 20, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's Gen Z, it's not Gen X, it's Gen Cs. 25 percent of all Latino Gen Cs are Latinos. Ay, ay, ay. 25, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> 25 percent of all Latino, of all Americans are Gen Zs. Imagine your future. If you're not investing in them, if you're not creating brand recognition, if you're not catering to them, you're going to lose them because today they're going to digital. They're going to social media because you're not delivering for them. So they're going to other places where they can see themselves reflected. And we present the real hard core negative data that they don't like to see, but that they want to see because it confronts them with their reality. Out of a total 1,022 shows aired in 2019, only 13 had a Latino lead. Only 48 had Latino co-leads. 11 and 24 were the showrunners and the directors and look at the percentages. Other than the directors, one point, none of them have more than 1.5%. Remember the chart where I told you that 30% of the audience is Latino. Look at these percentages, 1.4, 1.1. I mean, it's just, it, it's ridiculous. It's honestly, it's an imbalance that talks about a bad business decisions. Their excuses, oh, Latino stories don't sell. Um, you know, Latin, the Latino talent looks too Latino or doesn't look Latino enough. Um, audiences are not interested in seeing Latino talent or Latino stories. No way. This is what we present them because we are, we come to these meetings prepared. This is just an example, but we show them how in digital, which is the most democratic media ever, because there is no control, right? It's all about the content creator, which is the individual, and the audience, which is the person just liking or buying or following you know, the content. So number one Instagram account, Selena Gomez. Top highest WAG earner in social media, Shakira. Number one YouTube video in 2019, Daddy Yankee. Stories like Coco, Dora the Explorer, Fast and Furious, um, movies from J-Lo, uh, I mean, the Super Bowl with them in, you know, halftime, all are incredible successes. So this lie about Latino content doesn't sell, it's the biggest, most unfounded, lack of fact-based premise that exists. And for the people that tell us that there is not enough talent, we actually have created a database of talent called The Source. Out of all this census that we've done of shows in the last two or three years, we actually have compiled a list of more than 2,200 Latino working actors and actresses, writers and directors that are ready to go. They're not being used. They have been. They have been hired. They are vetted by studios and and uh, and and um, networks because they have been hired in the last three years. They were in one of the shows that we're reporting, 
but they are, have not been rehired and they are ready to go. They can be groomed, they can be grown and they are perfect for their pipelines. And, and, and lots of them are actually already ready, ready for prime time. They are ready to be leads. They are ready to be writers of big shows. They are ready to be directors of movies of uh, you know big box office budgets. So for the people that say, that say there is no talent or Latino stories and talent don't sell, we have the solution, we have the numbers. Remember, we're all about fact-based numbers. So to summarize, we told you how great the Latino is, the Latino community is. We're driving the growth, period. There's no way out of that. But we also told you of the unbalanced media that is actually creating negative uh, perception and is creating a negative narrative. We're giving you and we're providing anybody that wants to be an ambassador for this fight and for this mission three things. One is a benchmark, which is the Latino media report that talks about how the evolution of Latino representation is happening. Two is a database. So there are more names than you can ever wish for in that database of Latino talent. And third is our meetings one-on-one -on -one with decision makers, the conveying of the business premise of the blind spot that needs to be fixed, both for their sake and for our sake. This is the business case that we constantly do, although the moral imperative of Latinos in media is always in our minds. So if you, um, to close this presentation, I'm gonna give you some call for action. If you are a studio, a network or a streamer, one, use our report, share it. Share it with your colleagues, share it with your company, up and down. Why? Because it's a benchmark, it'll give you um, a metric and it'll give you also credibility when you change that metric. Number two, use our database. You can enrich your casting and your hiring so easily, people that are ready to go. Number three, hire Latino executives. If you think these numbers are useful, you can have an in-house person telling you these numbers constantly if you hire Latino executives that can actually bring you to amazing content that is authentic and that is um, successful. Fourth, join our LDC advisory network. We are a group of people that do this out of selfless interest of helping everybody, every American, Latino and non-Latino. And through the advisory network, you're privy to conversations, data, previews, and premieres of data that, um, that will empower everything you do. Number two, if you're an advertiser, use your media buy. Advertise on shows that portray Latinos and Latino stories. Why? Because if you have a strategy in your company, you create advertising that appeals to Latinos, but you advertise in shows that Latinos are not watching, your strategy is not going to work. You need to use your power of media buy to place and to demand actually networks to actually create shows that deliver the audience. There's no way out of it. You need distribution and your distribution has to do with the shows that you're buying in. Number two, include Latinos in your ads. Why? Because we Latinos in the audience know what it is to see an advertising that talks about Latinos other than the typical stereotypes, right? Latinos in middle class, Latino college grads, Latino students, um, Latinos that have been here for you know 300 years, um, Latinos that are indigenous, so many Latinos that are never represented. Include those Latinos in your ads they are Americans. They are all in all spectrum of society and they're beautiful, quite frankly. And third, hire Latino executives. And in the case of advertising agencies, creatives. Don't ever, I mean, wasn't that the saddest thing to see poor Biden um, getting into, into Miami and you know uh, playing Despacito and being booed? That was, that was sad. And the reason why that happened is because whoever was 
training him, guiding him, managing him, and uh, 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 designing his creative appeal was obviously not a Latino because a Latino would have never done that. So hire creatives that are Latinos. They will deliver authentic, beautiful, uh, real, fact-based um, strategies and content that will bring you a lot of growth. And if you are part of the audience and a consumer of entertainment, to the degree that we all are, according to Nielsen, every American in average consumes six hours of content every day. It's a lot. I don't know how they do it because I have to work, but I guess it's students. I don't know. But according to Nielsen this year, people consumed an average of six hours of content. So if you are a content consumer, whether you're six hours or less or more, first sign up for our LDC newsletter. You'll love it. It's fun. It's it's great. You'll be privy to a lot of information before it's spread. Um, you will understand what we're doing. You'll know of events. You'll know about presentations. And you'll be part of our family, of the family of the LDC. Number two, spread the word. Remember the numbers that I gave you. The good ones, the $2.3 trillion, the 86% of all new businesses, the 56% of homes being built, and also the sad ones, the 1.4 representation in media. Because to create a balance, we're gonna have to start being vocal about this. So we earn our place, how come we don't have it yet in media? So use those numbers, spread the word, and speak up, not only with your voice, which is extremely important, but with the power of your purse. You buying products that include Latinos in their advertising, in their philanthropy, in their curation, in their um, procurement, you supporting those products of those companies, you're using the power of your purse and you also use it and please use it by not buying products that you know are not supporting the community, are not portraying us in their in their content, whether it's advertising and shows or films. And look out for owners of companies that are supporting anti-immigration, anti-Latino you know, causes, because the power of your purse is tremendous. And when you decide what you buy and you think about who are you supporting with your dollars, your leverage will grow tremendously. So this is it for me. Um, as you know, it is critical that the business and political leaders in this country understand the power of the Latino community in the US economy. There's so much to read. There, is, there are so, more, so many numbers that you can use. Please go to our website. Um, first of all, thank you so much, but also go use our social media, go to our website, download it, spread the word. And with that, I wanna thank you so much for having me, for listening to me. I wanna thank Claudia again uh, for doing what she always does so well, which is spreading the word and uniting us and enjoy the rest of the conference, which is fascinating um, and see you soon.